Good morning and a very warm welcome to worship at Lindsay Union for Sunday the 14th of uh, February 2021. Um, a very warm welcome wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening and may the grace of the living Lord Jesus Christ be with us all as we worship together. Just a couple of notices. The first one is that Sunday chat, the opportunity to get together on Zoom on Sunday after the service. Today, again, um, 12.30 p.m. until 1 p.m. And if you need the access code, then contact myself or Kim and look forward to seeing you then. And the second one is just an update on the collection uh, for Crossreach after the, uh, the soup lunch on the 31st of January. £585 um, has been raised, which is actually over £100 more than last year when we were all together in the hall, which is amazing. Um, thank you for this, and thank you for so many ways in which Lindsay Union is continuing to worship and to love and to serve just now, even though we can't be physically together. Thank you very much for your generosity. Crossreach, of course, is the caring arm of the Church of Scotland, which serves so many people with different needs within Scotland. So the 14th of February, happy St. Valentine's Day. Here's a little thing I don't think I knew about St. Valentine. One of the stories about St. Valentine is that he was imprisoned and, well, actually beheaded and buried on the 14th of February, 269. And this happened to him for helping persecuted Christians and marrying Christian couples, particularly Christians, uh, men who were in the army. And while in prison, he prayed for his jailer's daughter, St. Valentine did, and her blindness was healed. And on the day of his execution, the 14th of February, he left a note for her signed, Your Valentine. So apparently that's where it all starts from. We give thanks for those we love and for those who love us. And we bring to God, as we come to worship, ourselves, our mix of the lovely and perhaps the not so lovely. And we come to hear again the good news in Jesus that God loves us, God's love for us, just as we are now as we begin our service by hearing this message of God's love on this day when we think about love. And it's the first letter of John, chapter 4, and I'm going to read verse 16 to verse 19. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because Fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. So let's come and worship God together. And our opening hymn really is a prayer that God through the Holy Spirit will open our eyes to the wonder and the beauty of the love that God has for us in Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. to see you. Oh. 
Together, let's draw near to God in our prayers. Let us pray. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. And through the Holy Spirit, open the eyes of our hearts that we may see you and meet with you. Help us now, wherever we're sitting, watching or listening, Help us to know your love. Help us to know the steadfast love of the Lord that the Bible speaks of. Help us to know that steadfast love of the Lord that is from one generation to another. And in our day and in this day, help us in the midst of our lives just now to know and to see the wonder of your love in the risen Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Jesus, stand among us at the meeting of our lives. Lord, you are love and we thank you for the gift of love, of human love, that reflection of your nature. Thank you for the ability to receive love and to offer love to others. Thank you for those who love us, those who have loved us throughout our lives. Lord, we praise you for your gift of love and the love we know in other people. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Lord, open the eyes of our hearts to see the purity and perfection of your love. And enfold us in that love, we pray. 
especially where there are times in our lives and maybe even now where love has brought hurt to us or we mourn the passing of love. Enfold us in the strength of your love. Lord, open the eyes of our hearts to know the fullness of your love in Jesus. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Lord, we thank you for the love of Jesus that gave his life on the cross for our forgiveness. And we confess now that we need your forgiveness. And in the quiet, we come to you for a few moments and confess to you the times when our love has been lacking. For other people, even the people closest to us. Lord, have mercy on us, and in your love in Christ, forgive us. Cleanse us, we pray. You teach us that your love casts out all fear, so help us to trust that we have been forgiven in Christ, and fill us now with your peace that passes all understanding to guard our hearts and our minds. Help us not to look backwards, but help us in your strength to look forwards. Help us to share the love of Jesus in our words and in our actions, wherever we are, and equip us with the power of the Holy Spirit to do this today and tomorrow and through this week. And these prayers we offer in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, Kim, our youth worker, is going to lead us in our all-age talk. This is actually the second all-age talk Kim has prepared this week. Um, she has done one to be included in the National Church of Scotland service um, today. And if you're able to watch that from the Church of Scotland website, you'll watch Kim um, doing an excellent all-age talk for St. Valentine's Day. Um, here in our service, we are continuing to look um, at the life of Jesus in Mark's Gospel. And Kim is going to introduce us to our Bible reading um, and give us some thoughts and reflections on that. Kim, good morning. It's good to see you. Hi everyone, I'm going to tell you a story that comes from Mark chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. Jesus went to his hometown with his disciples, and Jesus went to teach in the synagogue, which is a place of worship. Did you know that when Jesus was teaching, many were amazed at what he was teaching? But some then began to question, where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Is not this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? The people could not see past Jesus being a carpenter and that God had given Jesus the wisdom and ability to perform miracles. Maybe they wished they had the abilities that Jesus had and could not believe someone they knew could have powers which they did not have, maybe a little jealous of Jesus. We are told that Jesus was surprised and amazed at the lack of faith of the people. What is faith? In Hebrews 11 verse 1 it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, and the assurance about what we do not see. 
Faith is having confidence and trusting in God when we are not able to see or understand it. Therefore, the people of the home town did not believe or have faith in Jesus. They were questioning Jesus' ability and how he had the powers to do amazing things. Due to the lack of faith, Jesus was only able to heal a few sick people. Jesus was not able to do what he wanted there, so he sent out the 12 disciples with instructions to go to other places to share God's message with other people. Sometimes we can be like the people of Jesus' hometown and forget that God has all the power. We might forget to trust God or have faith in God. Sometimes we might not understand or get to see or understand everything about God. We might have lots of questions. Some we might get an answer to, some we might not. We can look to the Bible to help guide us in our lives and hold on to faith in God and believe in God's power and trust him with our lives in the good and in the challenging times. If we trust in God, amazing things can happen. God can work through us and do things we are not able to do by ourselves. Let me leave you with this question. Are you going to trust and put your faith in God when you are faced with things in your life you do not understand? Let's pray. God, please help us to remember that you have all the power and help us to trust in you and the love and grace you give us. Amen. Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much for that. Kim was helping us to focus just on the power of God in Christ and the amazing things that Jesus can do when we have faith. So in our readings in Mark's Gospel, we've come across that Jesus has healed a man with leprosy, touched him where nobody else would go near him. The amazing power of Jesus. Then two weeks ago, um, we thought about the four friends bringing their paralyzed friend and lowering him through the roof. Amazing faith. And then last week we heard just of the amazing work, the ongoing work of the kingdom of God, often without any intervention from us, in the parable of the growing seed. Here in our Bible reading today, we go to Jesus' hometown, the, the very place where you would think there would be most faith. But we find that it's here that there is perhaps the least faith. So let's hear God's word, and it's Mark's Gospel, chapter 6. And verses 1 to 13, Mark chapter 6 and verses 1 to 13, which Malcolm Mackay is going to read to us from the New International Version. Let us hear the word of God from the Gospel according to Mark chapter 6 and from verse 1. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Is it not the carpenter? Is it not Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour, except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and give them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. 
take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belt. Wear sandals, but not an extra skirt, sorry, shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading from his word. Amen. Thank you, Malcolm. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the gift of your word. And we pray now that through the Holy Spirit, you'll help us to understand it and what it means now in our lives and in the lives of those around us. As we reflect on your word, guide our thoughts through the Holy Spirit so that you'll encourage us and equip us in loving you and in serving you. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Why, Lord? Why don't they believe in you? Lots of early Christians were asking this sort of question. Why don't they believe in you, Lord? The churches to whom Mark was writing, maybe the church in, in Rome too, were asking that sort of question. Why don't they believe in you? And they asked it about their friends, their family, the people that they loved. Why, why don't they believe in you? And I think especially they asked it of the Jewish folk that they knew, Jesus' own people. Why aren't lots and lots of them coming to believe in you? Kim was talking about puzzles and things we don't understand and the need to have faith in things we don't understand. These people in the early churches, they knew and had accepted the love of Jesus that drives out all fear. That love had come and sought them out and they just couldn't understand why other people couldn't accept it for themselves. And people think that that's one of the reasons that Mark included this reading of Jesus at Nazareth among his own people, to help the early Christians have faith when they didn't understand why others weren't believing too. Why, Lord? Why don't they believe in you? That's maybe something that we think from time to time or maybe quite a lot. The people that, that we know or who are close to us, who don't share the faith that we have in Jesus, And we find it hard to, uh, to think why they don't accept the love that we know is, is true, but find it hard to know it themselves. For whatever reason, the church in the West, anyway, over the last, what, 70 years, maybe more, has found it increasingly hard to pass on faith in Jesus in homes and in families. And, and sometimes we find that sad and sometimes we worry about it. And a lot of the time we don't understand it like those early Christians for whom Mark wrote. And we kind of try and puzzle it out and think, well, maybe they're just not interested or they won't talk to us about it or I don't know what to say that might help. Or, well, they were brought up in the church and now they don't seem to have want anything to do with Christianity. And this reading that Mark has included in his gospel helps us, I hope, to put our trust in God, as Kim was encouraging us to do, for something that maybe we don't really understand, we'll never fully understand, 
But this reading helps us to trust in God, I think. So let's explore this reading to begin with, just for a couple of minutes, with three questions that we might have in our minds when we think about this sort of thing and people we know and love who don't share the faith we have. First question is, does Jesus love them? Second question, why do people find it hard to have faith? And the third one, will people stay away from faith forever? So what does a quick reading of this passage tell us? First of all, I think the most basic question and probably the key question of it all is, does Jesus love them? Those people we love very much and would love to know faith in Jesus, does he actually love them? Well, of course he loves them. Did he love his hometown in Nazareth? Yes, of course he loved the people in his hometown in Nazareth. That's why he went there. And he loved them as he took out the scroll in the synagogue and began to read it. He loved them as he taught them. He, he loved them and wanted to do miracles there among them. He loved the other towns around too and he loved the communities that he sent out the disciples on their urgent mission. That's why he was there. That's why he's here in his risen power. Yes, he loves. We can be sure about that. We'll come to, on to think a bit more about his love in a minute. But the second question, why do they not have faith? Well, why did the people in Nazareth not have faith? We're given two reasons. The first one is that they said, where did he get these things from? In other words, he grew up with us and a lot of us taught him in the synagogue. What's so special about him? Why is he different? And the second reason uh, that they didn't have faith was they thought, is he not just the carpenter? They were so familiar with him. So the reasons they didn't have faith was they didn't think he was special and they had grown very familiar with him. And the third question, is it forever? Do people always say no to Jesus forever? It's our own choice. It's an individual choice as to whether we have faith. But Mark in this reading mentions Jesus' brothers by name. And why does he mention Jesus' brothers by name? Because the early readers of the gospel would have known these brothers. James in particular, who was the leader of the Jerusalem church. So James, somebody who in Nazareth when Jesus was there, didn't have faith. But through years later, came to have incredibly strong faith in Christ and was the leader of the Jerusalem church. So no is not always no. People who were saying, is he not the carpenter? End up saying with the Roman centurion at the cross at the very end of Mark's gospel, surely this man was the son of God. God can do amazing things and no can become yes. So we thought about these quick questions at the start. What does that help us? How does that take us forward? Three things. When we think about those we would love and long for to know Jesus and his love. Be confident in the love of God. Listen to what people are saying and keep on praying. Be confident in the love of God. Listen to what people are saying and keep on praying. So be confident in the love of God. We began on this Valentine's Day by thinking about the love of God in Christ that casts out all fear. So does Jesus love them? Well, those people in Nazareth, yes, he loved those faces that he knew so well. And his love is wider still. The faces that he'd never seen in the towns he went on to afterwards and in the urgent mission of the 12 disciples. God so loved the world. 
God so loved the world, he loves us today, enfolds us in his love. And we can be sure he loves those who are in the house with us now, if we are with other people. He loves those we meet through the week on Zoom calls or FaceTime. He loves those in our care bubbles. We can have confidence in his love. Confidence in his love. Now, the people in Nazareth were offended by Jesus and by his teaching. In verse 3, we're told that they were offended. And the word in Greek for that, the original version of the Bible, is from the word scandalon, which gives the sense they were just outraged, scandalized by the amazing things that Jesus did. Now, the problem for Mark's early Christian readers was that people were scandalized by the love of God. We believe that the center of the love of God is Jesus' self-giving love on the cross. But for Jewish people, that was a stumbling block. They could not believe that somebody who died on a tree outside of the city could be from God. And Greeks, people who weren't Jews, found this incredibly difficult. Paul wrote in his first letter to the Corinthians that the cross of Christ is a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Greeks. But for those of us who believe, it's the wisdom of God and the power of God. So as we think about those we long for and love to see, have faith in Christ, have courage in the love of God in Christ on the cross. The wisdom of God and the power of God. Greater love has no one than this, says Jesus, than they lay down their life for their friends. And Jesus, the good shepherd, goes to seek his lost sheep. Kim challenged us to have faith in the things we don't understand. So when we find it hard to understand why folk don't have faith in Christ, don't use that as an excuse to question the love of God, but to renew our courage and commitment to the love of God in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. How deep the Father's love for us. Give thanks for his love. Sing about it. Celebrate it. Share it. Now, the second thing that we find in Nazareth is Jesus listening to what the people say. Yes, in this passage, there comes a time for moving on. People have a choice. People can say no. And Jesus moves on from Nazareth and the disciples in their urgent mission are urged to move on to other villages if people don't listen to them. But in Nazareth, his hometown, we find Jesus listening to what people said about him. In our homes, among those closest to us, we're there for the long term. And we must listen too. I find that a very challenging image of Jesus standing there in Nazareth and listening to what people are saying about him even when it's not terribly comfortable not making assumptions about them but listening so Jesus teaches us with those we would love to come to faith and those whom we love very dearly don't put words in their mouth. Don't second guess what they're thinking. Because when you think about it, that's a bit arrogant. Listen to them. Don't rush to judge them. 
Don't come over as being superior to them. But stand where Jesus stood in Nazareth and listen. Because as we listen, then we'll respect them and show that they matter. We'll love them. But we'll try to understand why they find faith difficult. And maybe that will help us to share better the wonder of the love of God in Christ, crucified and risen. So confidence in the love of God. Listen to what people say. And lastly, pray. God can do amazing things and frequently does amazing things. The gospel of Mark is full of them. But Jesus needs to meet his power and his love with faith. And from us who believe, we show our faith by praying, our dependence on God, trusting, as we thought last week in the growing seed, that the kingdom of God grows and is growing even among us, even among our communities and our families. I think there's, or I always find a challenge in this passage. Jesus not finding faith in his hometown. And I think of myself, and I've always gone to church. The church has been my home, in a way, for years. I've become very familiar with the words and the sayings of Jesus. And I think the challenge here for those of us who've been around the church and about Jesus for a long time is do I become so familiar with him that he loses his power in my life to challenge me? Or I just become cynical or complacent and don't trust him enough? There's a challenge, I think, to those of us who feel very at home with him. That's a good thing, but it challenges us. And challenges us just to depend on him and to pray for those, continue to pray for those we would love to come to faith in him. And in the second part of that reading, just to travel light with our assumptions, our habits and traditions. And perhaps this really tough time, these months, tragic times for so many, can teach us as a church to travel light and to travel in faith. These words from the message translation to the disciples. Don't think you need a lot of extra equipment for this. You are the equipment. No special appeal for funds. Keep it simple. And no luxury inns. Get a modest place and be content there until you leave. So we come simply, trusting, and in faith for the things we don't understand about the people we love and their relation to faith and our relation to faith. Having confidence in the love of God in Christ, committed to listening, trusting in the power of Christ, in the power of the Spirit, we turn again to prayer. Lord Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Lord Jesus, stand among us at the meeting of our lives. In the things we don't understand, give us faith, for the lives, our lives and the lives of those we love, we turn again in faith to you, thanking you for your love in Christ, trusting in the power of his cross and the hope of his resurrection. My times are in thy hand. My God, I wish them there. My life, my friends, my soul, 
I leave entirely in your care. My times are in thy hand, Jesus, the crucified. Those hands my cruel sins had pierced are now my guard and guide. Amen. So now a hymn that we can use to pray for ourselves for faith and commitment or we can use to pray for others that we pray for to come to faith. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Cloud, our pastoral assistant, is now going to lead us in our prayers for others. Over many years, we've tried to offer some support to the Lodging House Mission. Tragically, their manager died of COVID. And in our prayers, Donald will be particularly remembering the work of the mission and all those affected and the family um, there. So, Donald, lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. We come before you, merciful Father, with our prayers. We come with thanksgiving at the consciousness that you draw near to us when we pray. That you hear our prayer 
and that our sense of a relationship with you is enhanced when we pray, whoever we are and wherever we are and whatever we bring. Hear us as we bring before you the issues that lie heavy on our own hearts. In every pang that rends the heart, the man of sorrows had a part. He sympathises with her grief and to the sufferer sends relief. We bring before you individuals who are in a crisis the result of the pandemic. Those with serious financial worries such as they have never known before. Those becoming increasingly afraid for their future employment. Those in a critical health situation. The numbers of bereaved added day by day with continuing new infections. And every pang that rends the heart, the man of sorrows had a part. And through the pain, Lord, you won the victory and resurrection. And so in your compassion, Lord, draw near to such as those. In these uncertain times, may they be assured of the certainty of faith, of hope and love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, and from which nothing can separate us. We give you thanks for all who have shown compassion, those who have exercised their healing ministry in hospitals and clinics. Strengthen them, we pray, that they be not overburdened, but enabled and equipped for the demands upon them. For those who decide policy for our nation in Westminster and Holyrood, guide them to the best way forward for the health of our nation. For individual members of society that each plays their part to contain the virus, grant us all strength and patience as we are called to wait until the vaccination takes effect. We pray for carers at all sorts of levels professional carers, volunteer carers, and unsung carers. We give you thanks for so many who have shown a big and generous heart to reach out for those in hardship. Bless them in what they do, and through their acts may they bring something of your kingdom into the lives of our society. Among those we pray for the Lodging House Mission. We bring before you this morning the staff and service users of the Lodging House Mission as they mourn the loss of their dedicated manager, Stephen Mitchell, who has died in hospital from COVID. We would ask you to be with Stephen's family and friends. May they know your presence. We give thanks for Stephen's work over many years with the homeless and disadvantaged in our city, a true friend to all who needed him. As we remember his family and the mission staff, we also bring before you Angela, a support worker who is ill with COVID, and Graham, who is now recovering from the disease. Lord, we ask for your blessing on all the staff and for the work of the mission at this difficult time. Be with them, we pray, Lord. Bring them your peace. Finally, O Lord, we pray for the ministry of this church carried out in your name. Although unable to gather in person, we thank you that your word still reaches out through technology. For the homes of our parish and those beyond who tune in to our service, we offer our prayers. As we are enfolded in this family of this congregation, may we know we are part of a much greater family around the world who unite with the saints and angels of heaven to give you unending praise and with those on earth who seek to make your love known until your kingdom comes. These prayers we offer in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Donald, and thank you for worshipping with us wherever you've been watching or listening. And now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hold fast to that which is good. 
Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain upon you and those you love and those you find it hard to love, today and always. Amen. So we'll sing at the end of our service, Lord of love and perfect wisdom. <laughs>